and welcome to our presentation on justice for children in the time of COVID. Um, we'll be focusing on advocacy and activation of virtual courts uh, to enable the release of children in detention centres across Bangladesh. This presentation is by UNICEF Bangladesh. I'd like to thank my colleague Shabnaz Zaharin, who is the lead in this pillar in my team. And um, my name is Natalie McCauley and I'm the Chief of Child Protection for UNICEF in Bangladesh. I'd like to start the presentation by looking at the impact of COVID-19 on that whole emergency on justice for children with particular um, emphasis obviously of children in detention because that is what happened. As soon as um, COVID hit, the courts were closed and uh, the institutionalisation of children in contact or in conflict with the law uh, became a great concern, uh, not just the ones that uh, were sent to the centres from different police stations during the time, um, but also the ones that were already in the facilities. Uh, granting bail or release and even diversion was suspended because all the courts were closed. Um, and the outbreak of, of COVID was a worry because it could be exacerbated at any time with um, the overcrowded situation in, in these facilities. Maintaining any health provisions, uh, PPE for, for staff, um, any contract tracing, in these overcrowded facilities was a real challenge from the start. So just to clarify what the law says in Bangladesh, we have quite a comprehensive um, piece of legislation called the Children's Act 2013. It provides a lot around restorative justice with special care and treatment procedures for children in conflict and contact with the law. It emphasises the application of non-custodial measures by child affairs police, but also children's courts. And this includes release um, and diversion and bail without any conditions. and includes institutionalisation as a last resort. And this is within um, child development centres. Uh, and these are where we have our most concern. Um, and it also includes safe homes, so safe custody for children um, that are in contact with the law. Unfortunately, the, the existing practice is mostly centred around institutionalisation. Although the legislation does support the restorative justice and diversion, um, we are working to promote that. But uh, unfortunately, it is mostly institution is something that most of the actors lean on. And as a result, many children are in these centres, thousands of children are in these centres uh, uh, under pre-trial, uh, so they're only charged. And there's, some of them are even an award of the state so that they're being looked after by the state. There are three particular detention facilities, child development centres um, with accommodation of capacity of around 600 children. On average, around 1,200 children stay there per month. Um, at the beginning of COVID, uh, most of these facilities were at double or triple capacity. So the objective of the initiative was to get the number of children in conflict and conflict attack with the law that were in detention and safe homes down by 50%. We wanted to ensure that there was a continuum of care in building this resilience with families and, and promoting um, community-based uh, alternative care so they could be reunified with their families or placed in alternative care and there would be community-based protection mechanisms and systems in place to support them. And the program duration was uh, anticipated from May till, till the end of this year. So it's still ongoing right now. We had many strategic interventions um, that were undertaken, but from the start, we started with a risk analysis. And this risk analysis looked at the impact of the closure of the courts and the increased flow of children into, into detention facilities. Um, we are doing this on an ongoing basis and we're continuing now with the advocacy for diversion and, and alternatives to detention. Um, at that initial stage, we identified a strategy early on to establish and operate virtual courts um, and we assessed how we could do that and we created a plan. 
Um, and then we started our consultations with key partners. One of the key partners was the Supreme Court Special Committee on Child Rights, the Ministry of Social Welfare. And we wanted to um, organise a, a joint agreement, a joint commitment from, from both of those groups um, to ensure that we could advocate and have high level advocacy with the Minister of Law and the Chief Justice of Bangladesh. This high level advocacy was presented to the Minister of Law and the Chief Justice. We were thankful that the Honourable President of Bangladesh issued an ordinance to introduce virtual courts on the 9th of May. UNICEF was able to organise Zoom um, licences and support um, and institutional capacity building. Um, we equipped the courts and detention facilities to operate virtually. We established connectivity very quickly. We built up the capacity of judges and probation officers to work online. We gave a lot of technical input in developing standard operating procedures and practice guidelines for them. We strengthened the probation services. The result of the intervention was that there's been a new era of, of judicial administration for children. We now have the establishment of a virtual court in Bangladesh, which is still working as of now and still instigating early release as well as bail um, and cre creating a space where we can encourage diversion with children's courts. More than 900 children have now been granted bail or released and reunited with their families. Um, that means that we've released beyond the 50% that we were targeting um, at that time for the children in the detention facilities. Cash grant procedures have been developed and preparations have been undertaken to develop the grant to all children released by bail or by virtual courts. And then we're also strengthening community-based protection mechanisms, especially activating the probation services. Just some of the challenges, there was an absence of the virtual infrastructure in the judicial system when we started. Um, there was a need to strengthen the skills of the judges, lawyers and social services, including the police, regarding any sort of digital or virtual platform. There was also no law to support the establishment of virtual proceedings in the justice system. So something that would have usually taken us years to, to advocate for and get clearance for, we managed to get it quite quickly because of the pressure of what could have happened in these locations. Um, there was some rigidity and mistrust and fear of losing confidentiality in the usage of digital systems among all the actors. And I don't know that we've overcome that fear, but um, they certainly are still moving forward in a positive way with these virtual options. There are many lessons learned. One of the big ones was how central the, the strong and trusted partnership of the Supreme Court Special Committee on Child Rights was um, and all the relevant ministries. That strong relationship, the positive attitude that we got from everyone really was central. Funding is always a significant issue for child protection. Uh, justice for children sector was not having enough funds prior to uh, the emergency for regular uh, development programming and um, some of the, the things that perhaps could have been done before the emergency hit were not done because the funding wasn't available. Um, detailed plan with all technical notes and guidelines and standard operating procedures were developed as needed for the virtual court proceedings as well. Timely technical support of UNICEF to provide on-the-job orientation so we were very flexible in providing quick Zoom calls and training for all the judges and all concerned to make the virtual courts child friendly, but also uh, to push them to get them started. Facilitation of multi-sectoral coordination among the police, probation and judiciary was really central to, to making sure there was smooth function um, across those areas because they all overlapped. And this also included social welfare. And we needed to make sure that we could get the timely supplies for setting up the digital system and infrastructure, um, including the monitoring mechanism. Thank you.